Now we're looking here. We got all the tools. The selection tool, which as you probably guessed, is what you click with. The um, treble cleft is your staff tool, which means you can edit the staff attributes using alternate notations, you know, pretty you know, standard stuff. If you wanted to, this is also if you were to go use a default document, then you would use the staff tool to create multiple uh, staves. Now the two flats is your key signature tool. If you wanted to, say for example, go in the middle of a piece and you wanted to change your key signature, then you would you go here and you would edit it from here. Then this is your time tool. So if, say you wanted to get out of the little crazy little thing I created here and go into a traditional four four, then you can. The bass clef is your clef tool. So for cello players, you know, we have to go into tenor. Then we could go and edit it here. This is your measure tool. So if you wanted to edit the way your measures align individually, because I don't, this shouldn't affect your overall score. So if you're just going in and say something looked really cramped in one spot, and you can't use the uh, shortcut for moving measures around, then you would use this and make it stretch it out a little bit more, and then stretch the notes out a little bit more so you can make it legible. Now the simple simple entry tool, as it says, this is your simple entry. You can type in notes, and it makes sound. It's kind of hard to hear on my. Let's not turn it up a little bit. See if you can see if you can hear it. It makes little sounds for you to hear. That's one way of entering notes. There's a there's a couple of ways in Finale to enter notes. We'll get into all of that later. Now your speedy entry tool. If you have a a MIDI keyboard, I recommend this way. It's a whole lot easier. I don't have one on my laptop right now, but I'm working on it. But trust me, this helps a lot. And I'll explain how to use it um, once we get all that. Hyperscribe mode is for people who like recording live. And then this goes back into what I was talking about a minute ago with the MIDI. You have to use your keyboard. And then what would happen is, is when you have it set up, it gives you the count off, which I'm thinking you hear. And what you do is you play whatever you're wanting to play. And it will record you playing it. But the problem that is it tends to do stuff exactly the way you write it. So say for example I wanted to do uh let's see let's make this work. Half note, half note. Now you take the little trick I was telling you about a while ago is if you click on a measure and then drag it over it'll make it fit. But the problem with that is you get that. And then if you do that while you're recording, it will write exactly that. And it'd take more editing to fix it. Then it's a little more of a hassle than it tends to be. The three you probably guess is a tuple if you wanted to write some kind of different tuple in a in a beat. So if we wanted to say we'll put a quarter note we'll put a quarter note in. We wanted to make this a tuple three quarters in the space of the space of a dotted one dotted quarter. You can put three quarters in there. It'll make it this'll make it fit. And then you get a nice little tuple tuple bar. Let's see. Clean that out. Now we're on to the smart shape tool, which gets you to do slurs, dynamics, if you want to put in a trill tool, trill extension, octaves, the double octaves, the brack the double bracket. Single bracket, line, a glissando if you want to write in a glissando, a bend if you were using a guitar or if you like using bends in your music, then you would put in the bend, another bend for people who don't know guitar, the slide for tabs, because it gives you a series of tab tools as well, and you can make your own custom one if you wanted to. Now we click on this, it's the, the articulation tool, so if you have a note entered, Let's throw in another note. Click on this. And it gives you all your articulations, you know, staccatos, accents. Fermatas are in here. Trills, if you wanted to use a trill other than the one that's listed, or if you wanted to use make it trill sharp, flat, natural. And for people who use have to use bowings or if they use some um, 
if you're on guitar and you need that. You got rolls, harmon the harmonic diamonds for artificial harmonics. You, this is how you enter fingerings in as well instead of using typing them in. Pedal, all this, all this wonderful stuff that you've probably seen before. This is how you would enter stuff like that in. Now the expression tool, as you probably guessed, is for dynamics. It should come up naturally with show all. You can enter your your dynamics, tempo markings if you wanted to use um something that's not normally like or if you wanted like here for people who like jazz and you don't like people playing stuff straight you would you would type that in and then finale rec would recognize that as throwing everything offbeat and then let's see tempo alterations you know a cello rondo re retard a tempo expressive dolce de vc if you wanted to make it dulce or cantabile or if you wanted to make it a so a uh, soli solo I think you can do solis too and then technique like I said eight this pizzicato in this case rehearsals and miscellaneous and also that um it expands with different parts so if I were to pull up the score if I went back up here document edit score and then I went and did this it would ex it would expand it a bit all right and then you got your repeat tool if you wanted to write in a repeat you know put your forward repeat your back repeat and then you put dc ds codas finais all that wonderful stuff or if you wanted to create your own symbol you can create that here yeah that's it let's see then chords if you want to enter in a chord let's say C minor, why not? G over E. Let's see. F dim, F diminished. Uh, F augmented. It reads the chords. And then it edits, if you were to use the chords, it automatically does it and also a little trick I've learned if you highlight all if you run over and highlight them and then it'll highlight them all for you lyrics tool if you're writing something with lyrics this gives you that text tool if you were to type in something you can do that resizing tool if you wanted to change the size of the music if you want like edit your score, make it bigger or smaller, then you can do that. And then your page layout tool. If you get the wonderful indention and you don't want your the indention, then you can just drag it over. And it stretches it out for you. So everything looks nice and neat. And then you go back in with your expression tool. Ah, I want to do it. Hang on. That's why. You come in here. Type in this. Separate the pages a little bit. It'll show you that you got your break here. You know. The small details is what makes what makes your music. And then I guess the last part would be here. This is your user manual hotspot. Grabber tool if you wanted to just move the pages this way. You can do that. Magnifying, zoom in, zoom out. You just click for zooming in and then hit control and it pulls up the minus sign to zoom out. Then special tool, we'll get in we'll get into this. Oh trust me, we'll get into this. <laughs> oh yeah, the big bar in the middle of the thing. We might want to talk about that. Okay, this is your um, playback bar. If you were to set it up so you get playback on your piece, you would um, go here, hit play, you know, it plays pick up, and go. And then it goes into the tempo, plays what you're going to play. Pause, if you were to pause it. In the mode that it's in now, it doesn't. If you hit, if you stop it in any way whatsoever, it goes back to the beginning. But you just click over here, playback settings, and then fix that.
I'll show you how to do that in a second. But you know this. This is your return to the beginning, rewind. It rewinds by measures. Or if you're in the middle of a beat like this, then you um, it will go back to the beginning of that measure, and then it'll go back by measure. This stops. It takes it to the beginning. Pause stops at where it's at, and it continues from where it's at. Record. You can probably guess what that does. And then this is its fast forward. Like I said, if it's in the middle of a measure, it goes to the next measure. It keeps going, and then that's always to the end of the piece. Repeats. If you have repeats in your measure, and you want, you can set it up so that it takes the repeat so many times. And then this is your time. This is how far. If you were trying to figure out how long your piece is, and you didn't know. Like if you're trying to meet a, a specific deadline of how long the piece has to be, this would be how you do it. This is how you, this is how you edit the beginning of the playback. And in, in the settings, human playback, you got to set a standard like we edited back up here. Base key velocity gives you your introduction of velocity. Now you got your playback settings. You got you set it up by measure, so it always goes back to that measure wherever the leftmost measure is like if you were to go let's set it here for a second and say we were to scroll down here and we wanted to we wanted to start here but it would actually go back to here since we're just a little bit above it it would go back to here but if you were towards the middle of the measure then it goes back to wherever the closest line is to the um, left which it can be a, a good feature from times and then you can set it up the way I normally set it up is which is in current counter which makes life a little bit simpler and just hit okay and so then you can edit this up here yourself and then it does all the fancy work for you here and also something that I need to bring up in case you ever get this problem whenever you if you're trying to enter in notes and you have a pickup Measure one is that pickup. I don't know. I haven't understood why it does that, but it counts this beginning bit as as a measure, and then this would be two. So I'll show you right quick. Y'all might have noticed it a little while ago. Let me see. Four, three, one, two, two, and two, three, four, five. One, two, three, two, two, one, two, three, four, five. But it counts that beginning bit as a as measure on its own. Alrighty then, I think that's about it. At least for the beginning. And then I'll start going into all of the the stuff for the the tutorial from there. And then we'll start writing something. This is gonna be interesting. <laughs> Alrighty guys, if you like this video, don't forget to use oops. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And all all that stuff. And if we can get to, I don't know, get 10 likes. I'll keep it nice and simple. 10 likes and then I'll release the next video. Alrighty guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.